Snow in BC in March. Record cold in the prairies and in Atlantic Canada. And a chaotic Christmas travel season. Canadians got a taste of good old-fashioned winter this year, helped in part by La Nina. It's a weather phenomenon associated with cooler waters in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, bringing cooler temperatures further north as well. Think of it as kind of a planetary cold compress. So the influence of La Nina on our weather pattern, particularly here across the west coast of Canada, tends to be a cooling effect. During a La Nina, stronger than normal trade winds that blow from east to west across the equatorial Pacific Ocean push warm water westward toward Indonesia and away from the coast of South America. This allows colder ocean water to build up or upwell off the coast of Peru and Ecuador. But that cooling pattern is now weakening, opening the door for La Nina's opposite, El Nino, a period of warming that is already starting to form off the coast of South America. Climatologists are concerned as we transition into an El Nino phase because El Nino tends to have a warming influence on our weather here in Western Canada. This means expect a much hotter climate, not so much this year, but especially next year, as the cooling effect of La Nina vanishes and the heating effect of El Nino becomes more pronounced. If someone's trying to dunk on a 10-foot basket and they're getting about 9 feet, El Nino's helping push it up that extra foot. And if that wasn't bad enough, consider this. Some of the hottest years on record happened this past decade, even in cases where the cooling effects of La Nina were present. The red bars show warmer than average years. Take La Nina away, turn on the heater in the form of El Nino, and planet Earth could be waking up to a very new and hot climate reality in the very near future. Kamyar Razavi, Global News, Burnaby, B.C.